surrender of his wrist. But I'd die for peace. I know who you are, Lance Alexander, said a voice to a blinded man who was panicking and hogtied. Lance was gagged. He couldn't reply to that. He was scared and he knew he was going to die. He felt a knife on his neck. Time to die, the voice said. Lance Alexander awoke screaming in his bed. He was sweating and nervous. He picked up his phone and rang his father. Hi, Dad, he said to his phone. Hi, boy. Is everything all right? Asked his father, noticing his panicked voice. I just saw Lance Alexander's murder, said Lance to his father. I know, boy. Not another vision, said his father. Did you see the killer? I didn't see anything. I was in a hood, said the son as he wiped the sweat from his forehead. You were in a hood? asked his father. I saw from the victim's point of view, said the son. How was he? asked his father. He was tired and gagged and died of a cut throat, said Lance, trying to keep under control, like his father, who was also scared. Who was it? You or me? asked Lance Alexander Sr. I don't know, said Junior. They met. The next day in the office of the local coroner, Senior's father. It sounds like a killing by a serial killer called The Hunter. He hog ties, gags and puts a sack on the victim's head. Then he cuts the neck to kill them, said the coroner after they described what happened in the dream. The coroner told them the name of the killer. Apparently he was freed from prison on parole early for good behaviour and jumped parole and started killing again. Junior and Senior visited a scene of one of his murders which the coroner was on. Who's that guy? asked the policeman, seeing Junior. The King of Doom, my grandson, said Blake Alexander, the coroner. Didn't he murder his wife? asked the policeman. No, he was cleared, said Senior. But he could have killed her. He's a magician, said the policeman. Junior looked awkward. He knew nothing could convince some people of the truth. You have a gun. You could shoot someone. It doesn't mean you will, said Blake. Of course I wouldn't, unless I had to. The policeman said, This is different. No, it's the same with him, Blake said. But I didn't say I was going to kill my wife, said the policeman. I didn't say that, said Junior. I said I saw her die. I see dark events. Can we get back to work, said a man in a red tux and mask, scratching his red hair. As he held a red top hat in his other hand. All right, Sergeant, said the policeman. Stop bothering my nephew, said the man in red. He was Blake's great uncle and Senior's mother's uncle. Yes, Blake and his wife were cousins. 
His wife died and was reincarnated. They were remarried, but enough about them. What killed him? asked the sergeant. He can't see. His throat was cut, as usual, with the killer's victims, said Blake. Yes, wondered if you were awake. You look tired, the sergeant said, as Blake yawned. I am. I've been up late working on the case, said Blake. Your assistant been trying to get you to work more, said Senior. No, Tempest told me Junior would have a vision that Lance Alexander would die, said Blake. I wanted to save him, wherever he is. Tempest was Blake's other son, who had a similar power to Junior. Only he saw all of time, not just bad events. Oh, nice, you care, said, said Senior. I don't want to lose my grandson, Blake said sarcastically. Neither do I, said Senior, hugging his son. He looked like he needed a hug. Thanks, Dad, said Junior. What does the King of Dune do to help us? asked the policeman. He's a necromancer, said Senior. What is that, a vampire? The policeman asked. Junior rolled his eyes. He stopped dressing as a goth to get away from being compared to a vampire. No, Junior snapped. I can't do much. Can't smell a soul in the victim. Oh, he's a ghoul, said the policeman. No, we are not ghouls, hissed Senior. Shortly. Necromancers are dark magicians whose magic is related to death and the dead. Sounds like a ghoul to me, said the policeman. Junior sniffed and walked to the other side of the room. And sniffed. Are you all right? asked his uncle. Yes, I... I think I can help, said Junior. How? asked his uncle. Blake and Senior wandered over to Junior. Blake and Senior looked at each other, perplexed. What is it? asked their uncle. The spirit isn't gone. It's... Here. Just hiding, Blake said. You can see me, said the spirit. Yes, said Blake. Same thing, the policeman said. Senior glared at the policeman. Stop scaring the ghost, please, Senior snapped. I should be scared, not him, the policeman said. He's traumatised, and you are scaring him, Blake said. Who knew you ghosts? as the king of the Grim Reapers, who judged the dead. Senior was a reaper too. Junior wasn't, but he'd lived in a haunted house in his teens. We are nothing to be feared. We only want to help you, said Junior, turning on the TV in the room to calm the ghost. And the ghost thought Junior was odd. Senior laughed and turned the TV off. What? said Junior. It's not our ghost boy, said Senior. We had a ghost haunt to our home when he was younger. He loved to watch TV. Not all ghosts watch TV. Sorry about that. Blake rolled his eyes. Do you know where we can find your killer? Said Blake, embarrassed by his family. The ghost told him, where to find their killer. They found his hideout, but he wasn't